Okay, so welcome everyone uh, for one more meeting uh, from, from SoJava. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you, um, and it's my honor uh, to, to welcome all of you here uh, to the group. SoJava is doing a lot of activities. We're back at in-person activities. Um, we're also uh, doing a lot of things on Discord, right? So I'm going to ask to Max to put a link to Discord if anyone want to join us our Discord later. Um, so Java is also doing a lot of things in English, right? So it's great to be to have one more uh, presentation here uh, in English uh, for all of you guys. And uh, the person that is running a lot of the activities, uh, especially the online activities of So Java, is my good friend Max, right? So uh, I'll let him introduce our guest today. So with you guys, Max Ahuda. Oh, <laughs> it's a pleasure to hear. It's, it's a honor to be to be a host in this in this event. It's a new format that, that I that I think that will works in the future. Uh, and I I'm very uh, happy because I, I, I'm. It's a good opportunity to bring a, a Java champion, YouTuber, uh, podcaster. Uh, well, he did a lot of things with Java Sys one Java one one dot zero. Am I right? <laughs> it's uh, Adam B. And so thanks, Adam, here to be here and join us today to bring this topic. This very tough, uh, terrific one, because uh, well, complexity is something that we always fighting for. So <laughs> against. So, so please uh, go ahead, uh, Adam. Feel free to share your screen and. Uh, and speak more about you, okay? <laughs> Perfect. Who am I to say that? <laughs> I hope already my screen is shared. So this at least it looks for me like this. Um, I should look like, you know, uh, an angel behind a white screen. So um, if you like, uh, turn on your cameras. To uh, And Tiago Lino has to turn on the camera. I think that Tiago is a special person because Tiago is unique. What I know Tiago because I have the AirHex TV show. Uh, it runs for eight years, and what Tiago does, it rewatches all episodes, and um, and sees <laughs> because what is AXTV? So I am I'm answering um, questions. So I'm gathering the questions the entire month, and then the end of the month, I'm answering the questions. And it's interesting to see, you know, what we do right now is like you know, 100 episodes back a review. What happened 100 episodes back? And Tiago watches all the episodes and searches for inconsistencies maybe you know i said you know 10 years ago something different than now and this is always interesting to see so uh um so really great and big thanks to to max and because uh i joined the chicago java user group and max was also there and right after the the meeting he asked me uh, whether i could speak you know for su java and and we immediately you know, started to think about the title. So we had like, you know, 10 different ideas or five different ideas. And this is what happened with the, this was like, you know, th this is all, this is how the how the session happened. So it was not like, you know, prepared. And I'm actually not a speaker, I'm just a developer and it's just fun. So um, how this works for me is very important that you can interrupt me, ask me questions. You can use the chat. I don't see the chat yet, but uh, um, the uh, Tiago, uh, Tiago, sorry, the Max will maybe, um, interrupt me and read the question or or whatever um or i, I will because in full screen mode no oh, that's okay i can see the, the chat actually Tiago okay said, it disappeared for me wait a second where is the chat um he said he's without can right now yeah if it's full screen it looks differently so um okay so let's start with the show so for me java is still fun I get lots of questions why, why I'm not using other uh, languages, programming languages, but the truth is I get the questions from the beginning. I remember in 1997, someone asked me why I'm not using Python, just Java. Then later, you know, why I'm not using Groovy, why I'm not using Ruby, why I'm not using Kotlin, why I'm not using whatever. And uh, the, the answer is because there's a lot of interest still in Java. And uh, this is Java, what I know. It is really hard, you know, to, to learn every other year different different programming language is just you know there is um the only problem i have is the time lack of time you know notorious lack of time if i would l learn every other week different programming languages i would be never productive this is this is the truth um okay so um 
the most interesting thing for you is maybe the Ahex FM uh, is uh, podcast. Uh, for instance, last week I published episode with uh, Kesley, uh, Kelly C. Hightower about uh, Kubernetes. What you can also enjoy, this is uh, Max also there is an also an an uh, Discord server, and but I also joined in the Sujava Discord server. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's all. So um, the podcast uh, maybe related unit tests considered harmful. <laughs> we had uh, a nice episode with Alexei about unit testing, for instance. So there's already over two hundred episodes, I think, um, on on Airhex FM. So uh, this is um, what, what what I mentioned is Airhex TV, and what we do is the uh, time machine. What happened one hundred episodes ago? Um, and I think I forgot to do this yesterday, uh, this segment. But yesterday was uh, the longest show ever. Anyway, so um, good that I skipped that. But um, now the next uh, AX TV is going to be the first Monday of the month, 9 p.m. CET. And you can ask me questions. And Tiago is the friend of the show, actually. So there are some online workshops. Um, I do a few times a year because a lack of time. And the next one is about AWS and Java on AWS. Okay, this is the Discord server completely uh open so you can join and yeah this is uh i would say low traffic so uh you don't have to spend a lot of time there it's just just nice okay so what i thought what i can do is um i, I created some slides because uh i think as i i try to remember what i actually did in all the projects and uh and i found you know some patterns or pet yeah patterns not like you no know, design patterns just you know patterns what i what happened in projects. And I would like to share the patterns with you as so I have few slides, and then I can also start coding a little bit and explain you what I think. And uh, it would be great if you could interrupt me or, or share your opinions. Otherwise, the entire thing would be a little bit boring. So architecture. And I started a few projects in the last two years, and I thought, OK, what we did and how it started. And um, so I, I think the consistent thing is, I don't even think about microservices at the beginning. This is for me waste of time at the beginning, you know, to think uh, uh, how many, you know, moving pieces we have. We just start to write a monolith. And in Jakarta and Java, it was a war. Right now with Quark is a jar, but this is not a huge difference. The only, a little bit different is the Maven looks a little bit differently, but uh, this is basically it. So um, many developers are shocked that I'm promoting, you know, monolithic design, but this was always the case. So I actually always completely ignored the microservices. But sometimes I sold, you know, my monolith as a microservice, just, you know, to to have a, to, 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 to have a piece with the architects. But um, yeah, this is uh, the, the first point. The next thing is uh, related to the first one, don't distribute. So um, I don't know why before even microservices, there were a huge excitement about, you know, distributed programming. And I always try to avoid that. And the uh, the reason for that is very simple. If you don't distribute, you don't have the problems with two-phase commit transactions with, you know, uh, with timeouts and uh, partial failure. So if you can, just don't distribute and um, and try to, you know, to, to, to communicate as much as possible locally. And um, at least in Europe, there was you no know, uh, like uh, people try you know to to use JMS without a reason, events without a reason, and um, yeah, this is the the second thing. And um, the the third point in the architecture is also interesting, and it starts to pay off. I tell you why. Use uh, use synchronous communications for synchronous use cases. So um, a story you. Maybe you know, you know, Jakarta E, this is an older story, or, or Java E and EJBs. So I got a contract to help my client because uh, all the servers were deadlocked. And the funny story is, you know, the first node was locked, the next one was locked, and everything died basically. And uh, the interesting part is, uh, I, I took a look at the code and um, they just used the asynchronous annotation and they put the asynchronous annotation everywhere. So there was one asynchronous method which co called another asynchronous method. And and uh, the question is why it stopped? Because the result was zero CPU utilization and everything just, you know, died. And the reason was, um, if you think about this, there was a thread pool with a queue 
the queue was bounded, all the tasks were busy, and there was no room for another task. So, you know, um, to complete a transaction in the queue, another task was needed, but the queue was full. Game over. And I asked them, you know, why, why you are using the asynchronous? And they told me, yeah, because they need scalability. And uh, what happened then, we removed all asynchronous altogether, and it was fine. So it was actually absolute no issue. They, they just wanted to be asynchronous for no reason. And um, after I you know removed the uh, asynchronous annotations, I was the hero. So wow, you know how how you could you know how you knew. It's like I didn't knew. I had no idea why you're doing this. So I deleted this, and it works. So I was lucky. So um, and the last one is prefer boring tag. So I, I would say boring is good. Uh, systems for unknown reasons become complex by themselves. So there is no need, you know, to to make even more exciting tech. I, I remember uh, in in a trivial project, uh, developers got idea, you know, to use um, actors and ACA, and then uh, they asked me how to debug the system, and I say, uh, but I mean, why are you using the actors and and the events? They say, yeah, because they read an article, and uh, this is this is if you would just use Java, you know, just straight method call, everyone knows how to debug methods, right? So, and um, if you think about this. What's on the horizon is Project Loom. And what will happen with Room is, uh, with Loom, not with Room, with Loom. And a little bit of Room first, maybe, <laughs> and then go with Loom. Uh, so what you, uh, what you get with uh, Loom is you can start uh, a lot of threads and you can still, you know, use your own programming style, just synchronous method invocation, what we did in JDK 1.0. Okay, you are very quiet. This is normal for Brazilian. Are you shy? So usually, you know, a Java one, who was actually, who attended the proper Java one with some microsystems time? Anyone? Can you just write, write, raise, raise your hand or I don't know what you can do with Zoom or, you know, turn your <laughs> display or whatever so I can see no one. Max, you at least. Julio said that is, is, is just a bit boring stack. <laughs> is EGB boring stack, boring tech. What? EJB is um, is very boring. Uh, I would say uh, Jakarta is boring. So I would say um, because you know a, a few lines of code and there is no magic. I would say boring means you know it was used a lot and it's boring. And EJB is not only boring; it's all, uh, also dying because CDI will replace EJBs at the end of the day. So uh, so this is uh, uh, boring, dying technologies. EJB. Unfortunately, I like EJB because they were simple and lightweight. And um, the first iteration was a little bit crazy, but then they fixed that. Okay, okay which means, uh, oh, I also see Bruno Leite, also a friend of the show. I know him very well. So nice guy. And uh, uh, I only see a fraction of the developers, I think, here. Wow, yeah. there's a lot. There. there is like a pagination here on Zoom. Yeah, uh, yeah Mara also said that it, it is like a spring. <laughs> And uh, Vinicius said, Vinicius said, GPA is boring alive. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. So, uh, GPA. Wait a second. I have to, 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 to see where I can find chat. Show. Okay, wait a sec. Close chat, but I don't see the chat. Uh, in the bottom of the, the window, there is, should be, should be have, uh, a button with icon, like a chatting icon. Mm -hmm. Could you see? Chat. Yeah. Now I see. Okay, it was switched to to. Oh, I see now the chat. Perfect. So Great. um, very good. So it's your boy exactly like spring. JP is boring alive. Uh, Julia says uh, still better than REST client. Uh REST clients or a, a micro profile REST client, if you if you mean that, uh, is boring and simple at the same time. But I have to, to admit, um, if you are sharing the modules, then sometimes it's better, you know, to invest a little bit more time. I use HTTP 11, for instance, client with Java SE. Um, SOAP is boring and sadly alive. Uh, yeah, but in most projects, I, I think at I didn't saw soap for a long time. Um, 
and Corba is interesting. Uh, Julio or Julio. So Ma Ma Max, what is the right pronunciation? Is uh, Julio or Julio? I think it's Julio. 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 Okay. No, yeah. you have to know. You are from Brazil, it's, so I'm it's, just... it's it's hard to say that because it depends on the. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you find out someone called Julio and Julio, and like my, my like my my son, my oldest, my youngest son, my youngest son called Julian. But Giuliano could be Italian one <laughs> pronunciation. Ah, Julian. Okay. <laughs> so now, now Julio, we have to say Yari Julio or Julio. But Corba <laughs> is interesting because, from my perspective, Corba could be actually a killer technology. Because if you think about this, gRPC from Google is not that different, right? So the gRPC is actually Corba just repackaged. And uh, the, the problem with Corba was a little bit uh, too much ceremony, you know, in order to have to look up something, you have to look up the service first, and then you get the lookup service to look up something different. And uh, what I really appreciated back then was the API of, of, of RMI, actually, remote method invocation. And uh, because you can just say, you know, naming.lookup, and you are done. And with Corba, there was the narrowing, all the stuff. So I would say Corba is... Um, could take off, but uh, we would have to modernize, you know, the API. Um, uh, George says, I listened on a podcast from someone, Genie, Java Intelligent Network Infrastructure. Uh, Genie was also a great invention. It was a mix of RMI and uh, and Genie. So um, I actually interact a little bit with, with the chat, and then we can go to my... Um, so, and Corba implementation was expensive to license, very expensive. Vinicius, um, but you are from Brazil and there are lots of open source Corba implementations like Jack Orb, right, Vinicius? So you don't have to spend money. So uh, you could use Jack Orb, it was completely free. So um, Eric Lesser asked me, in your example about asynchronous, the team with problems wanted to build a reactive application using some framework. Um, this is what I saw a lot. People just used uh, stuff without knowing why. No kidding. This, this sounds somehow strange. And in Germany or in Europe, we have a magazine called Java Magazine, but this is not the Oracle one. This is our German one. And there were articles about various frameworks. So funny story. Um, we, I remember it was, I think, Jakarta Commons, I think, chain. I would have to look it up. Jakarta Commons chain. And I was in a project in a task force where um, there was a server which booted, right? And you know, you, you you boot, it means everything starts in a, in a sequence. And they used Jakarta Commons chain to implement like a system level in Linux. You know, they could say it boot a little bit and a little bit more and, and, and completely boot. And they were able to, to have a boot tree. So you could say, you know, these two modules boot, you know, at the same time. And then after this, the third module boots. But the cool story is I took a look at the repository and it turns out they never used this functionality. So it always booted you no know, sequentially as just started, you know, there was there was no such. And I asked them, yeah, why why you why you need the chain, Jakarta Commons chain? And the answer was, yeah, one day you will see, right? So in one day there will be a situation where maybe our server will boot, boot differently. So and we deleted the module, which actually caused problems. So I would say my observation is I don't know why uh developers love to use something new without knowing why and the problem then becomes that it is not maintainable because no one else can explain why we use such technology without a reason right so that's the problem so uh, no kidding i try to delete as much as possible from projects so whatever is suspicious i try to delete it having said this i would like to switch to another slide so uh, the chat is great here so um and how to start a project and 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 this beautiful you know um i have a question yeah. Too. Uh, yeah. we used to listen uh legacy code so you are seeing a boring code boring tech yeah it's it's the same thing because uh i'm a, i agree with you that um boring stuff is more for, for example more a testable tech technology that you give you the best the best mm -hmm. approach for, for the projects, for, for the, mm -hmm. the problems. But uh, we used to see uh, people uh, compare le legacy code with 
uh, useful code. So it's very different one. You could uh, explain to me what do you, what's your opinion about legacy code and how those people tra treat <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. legacy code today. Yeah. Um, to give you an, another example, what I mean by boring, for instance, uh, Docker, right? So um, if I use Docker, I, 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 I as I still using Docker, but uh, I use the uh, super images, usually um, CentOS or Red Hat. And the reason was because most of most of my clients ran in you know, a Red Hat distribution. So in the Docker image, I could just use the regular commands and I know what's inside. There were projects and they use Alpine Linux or they use, you know, DistroLess or UB8 or whatever. And they spend a lot of time with certificates, filling whatever, just to make the entire image smaller. And we measured, you know, then the the, the performance difference. And there was no difference. So uh, I used you no know, boring Linux, which I knew for years. The others spent time, you know, fiddling with the more exciting stuff, but the added value was zero, I would say. And my CentOS and Red Hat is still in action. And it, and it worked for years. And the other, you know, distributions, they change all the time. So this is one example, you know. And um, and uh, the question is, is the CentOS or Red Hat legacy? Um, I don't know. So I would say what legacy means to me is, is no more actively a component, which is no more actively maintained. And, and boring means to me, it is like Linux is actively maintained but uh, it works there is no no magic it just works right so this would be boring okay thanks <laughs> so like you know there's a german car uh, called volkswagen it just works it's boring right legacy would be you know the old volkswagen beetle it is boring but it's no more produced and exciting would be like you know bugatti or ferrari so if I go shopping, I will pick the Volkswagen because there's no added value to, to pick, you know, Ferrari to go shopping. Maybe I will you know, be uh, one, 10, milli 10 seconds faster, but then, you know, fiddle with my, with, my, with the, you know, the, the, the uh, not luggage, rather than, you know, the, the shopping, whatever I call it, you know, what I bought um, with the shopping cart. And uh, the just you know the Volkswagen is boring, but that's the job. This is how I see you know the entire the, 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 the distinction. Oh, thanks. Uh, and uh, Red Hat UB8, uh, yes, uh, Red Hat UB. This is Red Hat UB. It is true. Um, this is, but this is a minimal distribution. As uh, Julio or Julio says, Red Hat is UB smaller than three. UB8 is from uh, from Red Hat. You are right. Um, early adopters sometimes not a boring tech. Is it a problem? Uh, no. I give you an example from my current project. For instance, we started uh, one year um, one year ago with AWS Lambda in a project, which is um, uh, monolith. And uh, Lambda only supports Java 11. But I said, we won't start right now with Java 11 if Java 17 is LTS. So what we did is we implemented or used java 17 layer so we have uh java 17 or lambda for one year and we in, and we wait until java 17 gets released you know to kill the layer so um i would say uh what we did is a little bit dangerous but um yeah i mean but we are early adopter right so because there are not a lot of projects which have time you know to do this and we did it and yeah, this is um, so. And the question is, you know, uh, now what's the name? Do Doisemar Junior? Is this Doisemar? Uh, Dusemar? Max? For, for, uh, for English, is a Dusemar. Dusemar, okay. Dusemar. Dusemar. And for Brazilians? <laughs> for Brazilians? What is how it's pronounced? Dusemar? Dusemar. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I'm Brazilian, so this uh, we have to do it in Brazilian way. So, um, uh, cool. So, uh, early adopters, the question is, so, first, what I had to say, the focus should be on, you know, commercial software, what I'm talking about. In leisure, my behavior is different, so I do whatever is fun. 
if I'm working for my clients, I try to build, you know, simple software. So now early adopters, it means if my clients would like to be early adopters, I will ask them why, right? If you go to a shop and buy something, you know, would you like to be early adopter or not, right? So this is the question, why you, why you are early adopter? So there should be some, you know, outcome. Let's say early adopter could mean we build, for instance, right now, a highly scalable software, and we would like to have Loom right now. And if we use Loom right now, which is preview, we are early adopters, but the hope is one day it becomes standard and we can save a lot of time, right? I remember prior um, Java, uh, Java 8 uh, with Lambdas and Streams, uh, there was uh, an, an external uh, software provider wanted to sell us a framework with a framework with uh, with some calculations, computation, and to me, with lots of inner classes, it was really ugly. And we thought, okay, Java 8 is not available yet, but I would start as early adopter of Java 8 now with the hope that the lambdas, what we are implement, become a standard and we don't have to use the proprietary software. So I would say the early adopters was justified in that case, but you know, use being early adopter without a reason is just trouble, you know, and less vacations to you. Agreed? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and what do you say, um, uh, Julio? You say great base for stable container images. You are right, but it's not my choice often. Uh, you know, different companies have different super images. So some companies is a SUSE based, it's less common, I think, in Brazil, but in Germany, it's, it's actually German company, SUSE. Then uh, Red Hat, Linux, then some uh, some companies have their own base image, so I cannot just you know come in and say this is my image, just take it. So it um, so this is uh, and now with the, all the security problems, the company is a little bit more sensitive. Okay, cool. So first point: choose your standard, and this doesn't have to be for entire project. It was usually right now; it is no more. I give you an, an concrete example from my current project. So, for instance, um, if we are, we had actually a discussion yesterday, if we are um, on micro profile, for instance, right, then um, the uh, on, on Jakarta E, then I will pick, you know, JSONP, JSONB, whatever inside, JPA, I don't like to, wouldn't even look at, you know, Jackson or plain Hibernate, it's just my standard. So uh, by picking micro profile or Jakarta E, we already, you know, set the standard. So it means for me, MicroProfile and Jakarta, Jakarta e, um, is no more a, a, let's say, a dependency to me. This is my platform. I don't care about this, but everything else has to be justified. So, and this is, this is different because in my current project, we have one Lambda, which is monolithic and is based on MicroProfile. And the other lambdas are actually they don't use micro profile, it's just Java SE. So there are no, there's even less dependencies in the first one. So we have like two standards, no Java SE plane and micro profile, for instance. And back then uh, we use uh, lots of Glassfish and JBoss, Whitefly, Open Liberty. And, um, and with that it was the same. So we say, okay, this Jakarta EE is the standard, everything else is. Uh, um, so, but this has to happen first. So we agree, okay. Uh, what what do do we actually need? And historically, you know, you know you all, um, uh, how it happened in Java. So Java SE was first. Then uh, you know the J2E APIs uh, started to appear, and then we got and and then we get we got J2E with multiple implementations. This is um, and uh, to my knowledge, even Spring often uses parts of Java E. Uh, okay, the next thing what we always do. This is a little bit harder. But sometimes even in KISS projects, you have to, um, I, I prefer to do the hardest things first. And CI, CD. So uh, everything has to be automated from the beginning. So this, I would say, uh, this is, um, this is um, also KISS for me, because without that, there is huge discussion. And uh, so no works on my machine, for instance, right? So forget it. So it has to work wherever you, you have it. And... Um, and uh, yeah, there was uh, Vinicius from AWS. So this is why 
I prefer serverless, for instance, if I have to go to the cloud, I prefer serverless services with the very simple reason serverless means usually scale to zero, which also means every developer can have their own account with production-like environment and it will cost you nothing because if you just for development, you are usually below the free tier. But if you are working in non-serverless environments, you will have to pay per environment, which usually means developers get you know, a shared environment, test environment, and this is not, not appealing. This is what we had in Java for 25 years. So there's no improvement. Uh, so Vinicius says, serverless first always, friends don't let friends to use EC2 instances. Vinicius, you are from AWS, but I have a bit contradict you or contradict, I'm a little bit, this is not general. The problem is, uh, Vinicius, um, this is like, you know, serverless and surfless, right? So this is similar. But um, uh, serverless, the problem with serverless, this is 20%, 20 to 30% more expensive than EC2. But having said that, in most enterprise projects, it is still orders of magnitude cheaper than EC2 because it is nearly impossible, I would say, to fully utilize an EC2 instance in enterprise. You know, usually you, you always have to over provision with EC2 or, or Kubernetes or Docker. This is my observation. And uh, the serverless, it's, it, it is all, always fully utilized because it automatically scales up and down. So this is the huge advantage. So um, serverless is a little bit more expensive or not a little bit. I mean, 20, 30% is not a little bit. It is more expensive. But for enterprise projects, is the first choice, yes. But um, uh, I, I didn't want it to, to speak a little bit and not, not speak speak a lot, you know, about cloud today. But uh, in the cloud, is uh, the 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 kiss and so forth is I would say is different because in clouds costs come first, not the you know the simplicity. I would say in the cloud, this a little bit different model. We pick whatever is cheap and we can afford, even if it's more complex. And today, I'm assuming, you know, playing Java. Okay. Um, George says, I really love Elastic uh, Beanstalk. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You are one of the rare developers who really love, love it. So it's okay. But um, I would say uh, ECS Fargate is really nice. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you like Elastic Beanstalk, take a look at Fargate. Um, or uh, the newer one, it's called... Um, um, App Runner, I think. Take a look at App Runner, uh, for instance, or Light Sail. Okay, but Julio says, I confess that I want to use uh, manifold systems in a project just to make it less boring. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, you can try it. I mean, you could even, you know, create some Easter eggs to, to have more excitement in a project. It's also cool. Um, so EKS is very expensive. Bruno Leiter, yes. Um, AKS is very expensive and a bit crazy, Bruno, I have to say. Uh, what AKS is Elastic uh, Kubernetes Service? Because um, if you run it on AWS, you have two stages. One is to set up the environment and the second one is set up the AKS. And you, have, you get even CDK and CDK for AKS. So you will spend a lot of time with infrastructure. And the question is why? This is this is the actually why, right? Okay, now write simplistic Java code, and now it becomes a little bit contradictory. This is really what he did, and what I do at the beginning beginning of the projects, I don't even bother, you know, to have get it set, set as private methods or whatever. I just write a few classes with public fields. Um, um, with Java seventeen, I will use Java records. The problem with Java records is. Maybe you get the same problem as, as as I. I always start with a Java record, and then I find you know a few fields which are mutable, and then I have to convert the record to a class. This happens sadly often to me. But um, so at the beginning, I don't spend any time thinking you know about patterns, interfaces, factories, and whatever. I just write Java code even worse than a beginner. So I'll, like like you know session with public fields. No kidding. And I get warnings. I don't care. And maybe after a few weeks, we clean this up, but more likely this class is going to be deleted because it's also my observation is mission impossible to write sensible code from the beginning because we are learning uh, the domain, the target domain. 
this is what happens in every project so I never did the same project twice so we always have to learn so it means there's a lot of throwaway code at the beginning so in my eyes it is not worth you know to start with clean code from the beginning but you have to be disciplined and uh in one point of time you have to clean it up so this is actually the the idea so uh the chat is quiet which surprises me because this is very heretical in in germany so actually funny story in germany there was a project it was still eclipse rcp i don't know whether you remember eclipse rich client uh platform and uh, i was a consultant and uh, someone asked me hey uh, can, can can you can can you help me with patterns uh, i would like to know you know adapter decorator pattern factory and so forth and i wrote code more and more code and at the, in the end this was my mistake i asked what do you will actually do why are we writing so much code and he said okay actually i only would like to have you know a button with an action listener but I would like to be flexible. So I read, you know, the Gang of Four Patterns book, and I would like to have, you know, complete decoupling so the button doesn't know what is invoked. So we've wrote maybe 10 classes with beautiful Gang of Four Patterns without a reason. If I noticed that, I'll say, I, I, this was like, you know, around 2000, I say, I will never give an advice, you know, uh, without knowing the context. Because he asked me, Tell me what what factory does. Okay, so I, I showed them the factory. Then you know uh, we had decorator with everything there, but I never asked what you would like to build. This was my mistake, and uh, and um, this is one of the reasons, right? So I would say um, you really have to know you know the context. Um, okay, ignore patterns, ignore best practices. So in a, in, in another project, um, uh, and 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 developer sent me. Uh, slides, slide decks from a university why I was wrong because my code was not modular back then OSGI was big and they wanted to have modules which didn't knew, knew each, each other and you know separated class loaders and separate versions and um, the question to you is let's say when do you know whether modules are appropriate or not so uh, if you have a Maven project and you open a Maven project and it, is there a way to find out whether you know the modularization is you know appropriate or not this is the interesting question and um and um and what i do i can tell you uh my secret in code reviews i, I take a look at the at the versions so if you have a multi-module multi-version projects and all projects all modules ship with the same version means everything is released at once and now the question is, why you spend time, you know, in 50 projects, if there is never the case, then one project is going to be updated or, or isolated. Everything is now considered as a monolith. And um, so um, I would say ignore patterns and best practices. I'll take a look. Um, okay. Ignore ports and adapters too. Eric asked me, ignore ports and adapters too. Um, I would say in my projects, JAXRS could be considered as, uh, if, if you mean, you know, hexagonal architecture, for instance, you know, uh, ports and adapters, this comes from, 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 from this. Mm -hmm. I completely ignore it because if you think about this, JAXRS web sockets, you can just use it and, it and the ports and adapters are already there, but there's no reason to decouple from JAXRS, for instance. Okay. So, and to be more precise, um, what I mean by that is the following. So if I just switch to my terminal and I could start with my Quarkus create app and I'll call it uh, sessions. So it creates an app sessions and I open with Visual Studio Code. So um, so what I see here, it will be one greetings resource. That's all. So and how how I would start such a project. So first, um, session is a bad name. There would be a business name like uh, how is sessions in Brazil Bra Brazilian and Portuguese sessions session. And session, né? Mas the session. No worries, no worries. Session is a good one for us. <laughs> yeah, but what is the name in in Portuguese to session? Is the is the is, is does it sound different? Huh? Session. Session. And uh, yeah, the, the sessions would be session, like you know, like uh 
uh, a different name because the sessions is just you know this already the component name so it's a, a pity but so but um I, I go to source main java and then what i will do i will create you know the first component and this would be uh so java and now sessions this is what i don't like because um i would like to to design sessions boundary and uh yeah boundary and what happens now is i have here uh i have here the br boundary and add sessions resource dot java and the session sessions resource on this ships with path and this is sessions so and now the question is okay i would like to test that so what i need is uh, i need a public method and i have to return something so the question is what i would like to return and i would like to return a session so i would create a, a java class called session java this is prior to record and what i mentioned is i would really start with that title and uh, this is a little bit ugly so uh, not ugly this is uh, ugly but this is uh, inconvenient so um what we actually do as well i would even create a constructor uh, to to create it more easily uh, just just know for convenience and this would be in the package entity so what i like the entity boundary control standard and um so so we have session resource and session and this could return the session session just one and later an array and um so and i would say this is get and maybe produces uh, the um or do it media type uh, application json and then here i can say return new session and kiss is kiss okay that's all and the next step so let's see whether it's working and the next step would be to write a system test because how to write unit tests is impossible whatever i will now write a unit test for it it is a waste of time so i would start with system tests but we will see in a second um so maven clean compile a clean is not needed so i always get you know i make the apache committers or maven committers angry with my cleaning so no cleaning here you see quarkus and dev and it should start and then so it looks good so i could go here and say curl localhost 8080 8080 slash sessions and uh, i get the session back the problem is i forgot an extension the quarkus extension and a dependency and the dependency is so I would just copy this. I need JSON B. So the dependency is JSON B. Boring JSON B. So do it again. And it doesn't look good. So just restart this. And I have to say here yeah, always. And You see now it's working so um there was a rest easy with jason b and now i get jason back so this was would be the first iteration and um if you have if you have you know we could start to develop the entire api with very simple code and then one point of time we could you know make a java record out of that so we could say okay uh, because you know you, you may start with java 11 and then migrate to java 17 but uh, no kidding we do some so this for me is better than you know something like this um so i would say the getters or setters i don't get it so what is the difference between this and a public field no difference okay now um 
Java and Quarkus and Lambda and Aurora ship, yes. Uh, I, I don't like, I would like to skip the the AWS deployment. So if you like, Max, we can later do an AWS session just today. I would skip the clouds completely. Um, and compile is not needed. Uh, yeah, compile is not needed, you are right. And actually, uh, nothing is needed because Julio, you can even do this, Quarkus dev, right? So this is uh, the simplest possible way to start the thing. I wanted to be more explicit, but uh, this is the more magic. So now it's the same. Uh, reacted to Java Quarkus plus L L A M. What is LAM? This is a typo, I guess. Bruno. But Bruno, thank you. So uh, he attends my workshops. A ni really nice guy and uh, and smart guy as well. So cool. Um, any questions? So uh, Maximilian, I would say, you know, the, the, the situation will escalate because I use public fields, but you are already a pragmatic group of, you know, Java developers, so no problem at all. Okay. There is a question, Nohim, but I, but I think that we could uh, book another session to talk about cloud stuff. But Eric is asking, uh, yeah. if monolith first, wouldn't it be a contract? Ah, contract? Uh, okay. Start with uh, that. Actually, in my current project, our Lambda comprises 400 classes. So uh, we have Lambdas, huge Lambdas, and it's not a problem at all because uh, Quarkus optimizes the uh, with reflection or the, the uh, with reflection with the build extensions, the byte codes, there is no reflection or no class loaders. And uh, so we building monolithic Lambdas, right? This is no contradiction. And I, I don't know how to call it. We, we we don't call it at all. We just misuse Lambda as a runtime and it works good. And um, maybe um, just uh, Azure Functions, by, this, by the way, is the same. And how this works behind the scenes is, is um, you have an API gateway in the front or, um, or application load balancer. And the API gateway or application load balancer are creating, are receiving, you know, the HTTP requests. They are converting the requests in HTTP events, and the events are consumed by Quarkus by specific extensions, Quarkus extension, and Quarkus invokes JAXRS. So for us, we don't even know that we are running a Lambda. So Eric, it is like for us, is Lambda like Docker? No, no, no difference. Startup time, two seconds. You can have a hot Lambda, so uh, then it will pay you know 15, 15 euros a month roughly and uh then it's uh it's hot okay cool no indirections means um okay we get indirection a possible indirection with dependency injection uh but uh what i meant is no interfaces no factories i'm i in my current project i think we have two interfaces uh for persistence because we have multiple implementation of of our persistence but uh, for 400 classes, one interface. Um, what was a few years ago, I it was like everyone wanted to have interfaces, and this in Germany. So like the architects were crazy about interfaces. And uh, what I never understood is if you have an interface and you implement the interface and you call the implementation impl, I would say this is something wrong, right? Because uh, if you call the class impl, the question is, what do you do with the second class? You cannot call it impl2. Right, so if you have an implementation, you have to correctly name it. So let's say we have an order service, then the implementation I would expect to be called, you know, uh, Amazon order service or Shopify order service, but not order service impl. It does not doesn't mean anything. So it's like you know, this is what I meant. And don't write clever code. So uh, I would say uh, it is more challenging to write simple code than clever code. And clever code means, you know, try to 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 have as dense code as possible. Or sometimes, you know, as uh, I remember as reflection, for instance, was, uh, was uh, new, right? So everyone wanted to have everything in reflection just for fun. And um, also cool, <laughs> this is also a cool story. Um, I was in a project and uh, everyone complained that our project has really bad, you know, statistics because of coupling. We have uh, cycles and uh, and uh, I said, okay, but 
I mean, we sometimes we need cycles of what we can do, right? And there were some reference projects with great numbers. And I said, it is impossible. I mean, the, the others, they also have to call, you know, from time to time, the other class. And I took a look at the, at the code and what they did, they knew how the tool measures, you know, and if they had to call another module, they use reflection. So, you know, the an analysis tool couldn't detect the cycle. So, which was actually cool heck. So, okay, if this is the pattern, I can write your library. So we have completely decoupled. So th there will be absolute no dependencies at all. But the problem is, you know, a minor change in the method signature will break the entire system, for instance. So I would say don't write um, clever code, um, just write simple, stupid code. And why? Because more than 50% of your code won't, won't survive first iterations. So this is this is the, the, the observation. Okay, next one. Build. I get asked to you know Maven or Gradle. In my projects, I prefer Maven. Why? Because my builds are very simple. So there, there, there is no magic, right? It's different if you have to you know implement something for Android, for instance. There are lots of variations. So of course, then use Gradle. But uh, today, you know, a little bit more focus on backend. I always start with Maven, and Maven is that simple. And even you know, an, an, a simple Maven is faster than simple Gradle. This was my observation, interestingly. And I don't need to you know programming in 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 Maven. So what I what we also don't use no POM inheritance, no modules, because if you don't have dependencies, there is nothing to inherit. And uh, Maven modules are uncommon. And uh, having said that. Before I would introduce a Maven module to share simple code between other modules, I have nothing against copy and copy and paste in the first iterations. So um, uh, microservices are all about copy and paste. We have to recognize that. You cannot have decoupled microservices with shared jars. It doesn't work. And uh, so if you have something like a session and you would like to use my session before we create a shared jar, you just you know copy the code and this is how it works no problem at all so copy and paste is a good thing you know and with stack overflow is even our best practice uh we're using maven j package oh, perfect um perfect so um reduce eliminate maven plugins so at the java e jakarta e time we had absolutely no plugins with quarkus you need to you know the quarkus plug plug uh, plugin another observation is Maven is not CI CD. So um, what I noticed, um, it now is less, but a few years ago in Europe, there were projects where they used no, um, there were even developer lists in Maven and Maven generated a website. I forgot the, there was a plugin who generated a website, project website, summary, crazy stuff. In one project, I, I there was a plugin with, with crazy URIs and I took a look and I say, what are the URIs? And there were pictures from developers. So there was even no uh, Instagram <laughs> was built into Maven. So I would say um, Maven is not CI/CD. So what it means is if we need stages, we use it as in the pipeline. So um, uh, we have no uh, lifecycle chaining. So we call sometimes even, you know, directly plugins in the pipeline. And it, and it works well. Um, so why this? need for speed for instance in the pipeline how does look like in ci cd is we compile it first then we run unit tests this is the next stage then uh, we create the the uh, um, sometimes integration tests then we create the um, the package the archive or or docker image the uh, the uh, deployment unit and uh, then we try you know to start it in, in an environment and then we run the system tests. So what it means is we need a modular build in the CI CD pipeline to see the stages. If Maven would do everything, there will be one huge blob build. You will wait five minutes, 10 minutes, and at the end you get to you know an answer, it works or it doesn't work. What I prefer is to have an individual stages where you say, okay, and a, a unit test was successful, but integration test broke. You know, like a visual feedback, and this only works if the Maven, um, uh, if not if you know execute, I don't know, uh, in a system test that everything else is re-executed. So I try to avoid uh, life cycle, uh, how to call it, life cycle hooks. 
exactly. Very good. So let's see about what what are the questions. Um, start a Java project with Jakarta and micro profile dependencies is simple and I can focus on business problem. Very good, Tiago. With Quark, Quartz Spring, I have to know which dependency I will have to use. This is very true. And Quartz, I would say legacy. Um, I'm really surprised. Of course, it's like a scheduler. Uh, in the cloud, it is not usable because where where to run Quartz, you will use you know the Event Bridge or uh, on on AWS um, or CloudWatch Events was the older name. And uh, on on Java E, we just had a timer without knowing what's behind the scenes. And and some application servers even used Quartz. Um, exactly. Uh, so. Add, hey, remove. Mm -hmm. he, he he said quarks, but it means quarkus actually. Okay. <laughs> and add remove quarkus. This is what Tiago Lino said. Uh, add remove quarkus. So this add and remove is contradictory, and quarkus is an asterisk. So Tiago, you have you have to clarify. Yeah, no, no, this is all. Let me let me try let me try to help you. Actually, he what he means is that with. Quarkus and Spring, not Quarkus, Quartz and Spring. You understand? You get yeah. It? So that, that I, is, I, that's the reason why he, he, he typed Quarkus with asterisk because we used to, to say that when we did okay. something like on the chat. So something like that. <laughs> okay, got it. Julio says job runner, some apps say job runner is okay. But this is like, you know, the commitment. If you say, um, yeah. For instance, um, when you need Quartz or Job Runner, there are some projects where you have to run lots of jobs. Then, then it's obvious. Then you can say, okay, then uh, I, I mean, Quarkus is not the solution. We need something different, or we we build even we schedule the jobs by ourselves, so we build our own system, or we use Quartz, Job Runner, whatever. On, for instance, AWS, you would you could use the enterprise scheduler for EventBridge, so it's already done. It would just call you, right, Lambdas or whatever. So it really depends what your what is you know, the main goal in your projects. If you have a, if you have you know a lots of batch jobs, you need something, and job runner might be the solution. But I wouldn't use, for instance, this is a very interesting topic because what I saw in lots of projects a few years ago, they use Quartz just to have you know a, a few periodic jobs, just you know cleaning the cache or whatever. For that, you don't really need you don't need quartz or any anything else. You could just even execute a service, for instance. Well, my first choice would be, I think it's called a scheduled executor service. It ships with Java or even timer task. Java util timer task is forever in in Java. Java util timer task to schedule jobs, for instance, right? Okay, and need for speed. What I mean by that is we continuously monitor performance the faster the build the more productive you, you you are so if if you can you know speed up the uh the deployment um um and and build uh and and uh, recently for instance maven uh, ships with maven cache which can speed up your build so this is where you should invest time uh so boring but fast this is actually the the idea right okay testing um so first, start with system tests and completely ignore unit tests. This I get a lot of trouble with it. So what is system test? So in my project here with Quarkus, um, um, Max, how many attendees do we have today? Do you know? See this? 30, 30, 31. It's okay, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> 30 nice guys. Very good. Nice people. Guys and gals, of course. Uh, Quarkus, what was it? Uh, I wanted to create app. And what, I what I'm doing, I would create another project. It's called Sessions ST. And uh, this Session ST, uh, Sessions ST, is only used for testing purposes. This is the strange part. So I would reuse Quarkus here. So, and what I would use here, for instance, I would go here and use not that. I think it was Quarkus client. No, 
no, not Quarkus. I think Rest Easy. No, Micro Small Right, Small Right. Rest client was what I'm searching is uh, rest. Exactly, rest client. I was right. Uh, um, because there is one dependency, one extension, which is uh, not small right. And this was the rest easy. So I thought it was this one. But um, this is right. So this is micro profile rest client. And um, what we do then, so what I will do, do it by hand. And usually, I don't do this often. What happens is I have a template or a POM XML with all the microprofile dependencies and I just use them all over and over because they don't change. It's always the same microprofile API, right? So, um, okay. So rest assured, I don't need rest assured. I never use that actually. I'll show you in a second why. And uh, what we need is in source test Java. Um, I would use now the same and, uh, oh, wait a sec. Well, uh, Vinicius sent on the chat and the comments to a comment on the chat in order to add the extensions directory. By using yeah, I show you this how, how to do this. Um, there is um, there is a Quarkus. He means the I can add the, with the Quarkus uh, extension, right? This is what he meant. Yeah, actually, it's, yeah. A, it's a common that you could add easily the, the dependencies. Yeah, uh, but um, the cool story is sometimes you are faster just by command. Uh, sorry. Yeah, command dot. Because you get the auto completion here. So you can you can use the Quarkus integration with extension, or you can just you know type here. So it depends. If this is the question, this is uh. Yeah, but uh. Thank you. So did I perform that? I hope so. Test no, not yet, right? Uh. Yeah, I did. This is here. And now what we can do, we have two projects right now. So we have one with session resource. So what I do here, I would just completely copy this, right? Uh, not, uh, not this rather than completely copy actually the class. Session resource, session resource, copy the class and put the class here. So, and I rename it. This is sessions resource client. And um, this is going to be the interface. And interface is bodyless. So, and what I did, I created my own client. What I'm wondering is why I should go X, uh, yeah. Source test Java looks good. Session resource. What's wrong? Source main Java. Wait a sec. Ah, I have here a problem. So we have here dependency, dependency. You see the problem? What's wrong with the dependency here? It looks actually good, right? Yeah, all quiet. You should. You are supposed to help me right now. Dependency. Okay. 
and now we add. You gotta start from the artifact name instead of to provide the group ID. I think it will help you. Yeah, yeah, but I think it was right, so I couldn't spot the error. Um, or, um, or maybe just just execute uh, the common Quarkus extension add on the on the upon to help you. Dependency, dependency, this is good. Dependencies, Quarkus, Smorai, REST client. Is it, is okay. it, is it correct? IO.Quarkus as a group ID? Maybe it could be another one. Looks like. Um, this is what. Uh, yeah. He meant, right? Um, rest easy client and we have rest uh small right lots of clients with rest client rest Quite only just try to do this. Yes, I think it is. Anyway, actually, I did it today, but um, yeah, we have to we have to fix it. Otherwise, it's boring. Um, um, no, I actually do this a lot. Oh, uh, Julio sends uh, the dependence node on chat. <laughs> yeah, I lost the chat. Wait a sec. Um, view, hide the video, show. Wait a second. My chat is gone. This this is a pity. Show all windows. Still no chat. Um, I only see you. Okay, no problem. This is uh. I'm pretty sure it's small i right? Small Quarkus small i and this was actually right. This was the REST client. Uh, op rest client and exactly this is the rest client and i will just try to remove that first are yeah. you sure that um the group id is the same yes okay um, okay now it looks good because i get compiler errors and dependency IO Quarkus. It's missing the version properly. Okay. Because it should be imported automatically by the dependence management system. In your eyes in, in the bomb. Yeah. I have it here. This is another, this is what, uh, this is my projects template for Quarkus. And I will just take a look, ST. So, Interesting. It's Quarkus REST client. It was renamed. Um, I was pretty sure this is small, right? And this was dependency and this is extension. So my fault. 
this should be this without the numbers. So wrong extension. Which is good. So the error was the extension Crocus knows about and it inherits the diversion from here. What I added was not an extension, it was a regular dependency and it missed diversion. And I thought, you know, there was some special character was this was my suspicion. But let's see. So now it now it builds. And we have now here the uh, the session resource, and there is no session. So what you will have to do is for the tasks you will have to reach to um, to use here the response, for instance, response, response. And so. And then use this and inject this interface. This is also wrong. Wait a sec. This, let me fix this. Rename file to that. And the response is this one. And then what we can do, we can write now a test session resource it resource it.java. And this is just regular test. And now it comes with Quarkus. I can say this is a Quarkus test. Quarkus test. And now inject the uh, REST client. And this is the session resource client. Client. And write a test. Uh, yeah, fetch. Why not? And this would be a test. So this will still break because what I forgot is to say here, register REST client and say the base URI is HTTP localhost 8080 slash, and there will be sessions. So with that, what I have here, I can... I have my test and I can just use here the method, what was it, uh, session. And what I get back is a response. And it is auto-closable. It was question yesterday, question, var response. And then I could, of course, use um, JSON B or JSON P and, uh, but, I will have to add an additional um, dependency. So now, and of course, what I can do is I can say, you know, uh, response, uh, get status, I think, exactly. And uh, yeah, and just test it. But the interesting part is, um, so this is what we start with, write system tests. Now the question is why I deleted um, rest assured and I'm using, you know, I'm fiddling here with the micro profile. And the answer is because this is reusable. So I could I, I created this more or less with copy and paste, and I could actually give you the interface and you can use it in a project. So you get a tested microservice client, so it's reusable. And REST Assured is not reusable. It can be only used for testing. Um, okay, and then just, you know, do the status here. And with a little bit of luck, it should actually work. So always continue. And you see 200. So it worked. So sorry for the, I've, I just used no wrong dependency. But uh, yeah, now it was, so we have two projects, one system test project and the regular projects, the system test projects calls the first one. So that's, this is the idea. Okay. Questions regarding this and, uh, ah, here's the chat. Okay. Still don't see this. Now I see this. Can, can, can you see the chat again? Yeah, I can see the chat again. It was just, I don't know, it was, an, uh, I had to push several times and now it appeared that the, the, the window was hidden and, uh, or, yeah. So, um, 
yeah, uh, uh, Julio says there is an um, Quarkus multi-module example, and um, dependency management is okay. So the, the error was uh, what Julio uh, gave me is the Quarkus REST client, which is an extension. And what I used was a uh, an, an dependency, and Maven complained that the version was missing. And my suspicion was that, you know, be in the dependency, I just have a typo. This was what, what I searched for. Okay. So we covered now a little bit testing. So what means is uh, ignore unit tests. So this is how we start with system tests. So everything has, is tested from outside. And we start with unit tests after a few iterations, sometimes even after weeks. If we have a true business logic at the beginning, there is nothing to test. I mean, I have my session with you know, as data carrier. Maybe if you go to the database, it's still nothing to test. So, and I get lots of trouble with it. Why? Because uh, clients expecting, you know, code coverage. And the code coverage is measured with unit tests. And the problem, of course, is um, if I don't have unit tests, it's zero code coverage. And uh, the system tests coverage, um, you, you could do this, but most companies are not doing this because it's harder. You will have to install a kind of an agent in, in Quarkus or application servers. And then you get the, uh, the, the, the system test coverage but it's in most companies is not not appreciated or, or it's not done with the outcome that most of the projects are 80% unit tested, but no one knows whether it's actually working. So because it, it, it could happen that everything is green and the server don't, don't, don't even starts, right? Um, okay, uh, stress tests, very important. So uh, what we do then, we are using the system tests and uh, and write stress tests to see what happens, right? For instance, how many lambdas are active if you're talking about lambdas or, you know, is our Docker container uh, big enough? And what we try to do is to, you know, to sabotage a little bit the environment. What I did, you know, at the application server time, I misconfigured the connection pools, you know, that we only have one connection with 30 clients. And, and I was curious how the exceptions look like, what the behavior is. So avoid mocks and local test environments. So mo mocking, um, so there are lots of developers who, who, who love mocks and everything is mock out. But um, to be honest, in most enterprise projects, it's not like we write a crazy complex logic. And if you mock out the database and everything else, so then you are testing the mocks. So what I already see is no kidding is, for instance, um, what I saw or what I see frequently in projects, that what developers would do, they would mock out this, be mock out the response, and then say, okay, I expect that the response return 200, and in order to, and, and then they will test the mock, right? Because they say, when someone calls from response, get status, return 200. So at the end of the day, you've wrote a unit test and you didn't test anything. So there's lots of code, which is completely pointless. I saw um, or I see still uh, projects where they are testing enums, which is crazy, right? Does enum work? I mean, why not? I mean, what, what can go wrong? So they go, you know, to enum and, and call name names and see whether all names are in the enum. Or or they call setter and see whether if they call setter, the getter also is working. I never saw a no get on setter failing in the history of Java, but it's still tested a lot. So um, for me, it doesn't make any sense. And uh, I don't do this. And um, the problem is, of course, my statistics or my my my, my metrics and don't not always look good. So um, I would say the um, how is the tool called? You know, the um, Sona Cube is uh, evil in some projects. So uh, it should help us and not we should not be slave. You know, of of Sona. Uh, Adam, Bilzema did a question as well. Uh, the question is how to conv convince my a company to do this simple thing that may seem like a lack of quality. Uh, and, who asked the question? I don't see this. Elzema. Okay, but uh, in chat? Yes. Huh. As the last question well, in my sorry, case is dependency I, I, management I, I, is okay. Oh. I sent direct to oh. 
<laughs> he sent direct to me. Sorry. <laughs> ah, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, now I see this. Uh, how to convince right. a company to do the simple thing that may seem like a lack of quality? It depends, you know, on the culture in your company. And uh, and for me, quality means, you know, it's a good names. We spend a lot of time, you know, to find the proper name for classes, methods, and packages. So this is the quality. And if the code is simple, so if you invite third-party developer and looks like a code and say, okay, I completely get what, what you did, then you won, right? You win. But uh, the lack of quality, you're right. The, 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 but it, 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 sh it shifts, right? I, I remember 10 years ago, quality is all public methods has to be come with Javadoc. With you know, with the consequence that all getters and setters were commented, which is pointless. So I would say, if your company has to deliver software fast, they usually don't care. So what means quality? Quality means you can maintain your software well. So if and uh, to my opinion, the company have trust you to write good software. If company will trust you to write good software you will try to write good software, right? And whatever you're doing is okay if the software is maintainable. So it's like trust relationship. You know, they cannot... Yeah. But um, I know what you mean. Uh, do, I forgot the name. Dosema or Dusema uh, Junior. Um, yeah, it, uh, it was... Uh, this was what people blame me, you know. Uh, you are, you are, you are, you like, you know, monolithic programming. Say, I say, I don't care how you call it. It, it has to work, right? And... Uh, <laughs> In one company, uh, they they I don't I don't know what they remember model driven architecture back then. They wanted to generate everything and didn't believe in this. Was, okay, I mean we we can spend time you know modeling and then generating everything. I don't believe that it will work. And they say okay, I'm heretical because uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, it is uh, this almost one day, right? So it's one half hours. So we so we already you know it's the next day here on, on my side. Um, test really. response, yeah. Test response time can slow down with system tests. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely, Eric. System tests are slower, and this is uh, very important that we have a multi-stage pipeline because we get the first feedback: does project compile? The next feedback: are unit tests okay? The next feedback: integration test and build, and in the very end, system tests are running. So I know the the um, the more we test, the slower it gets. But you know, you get immediate feedback, and yeah, and you know, the pipeline can run 20, 20 times a day. No one cares. You no, know, you don't. You don't have to wait. So you have to then check after five minutes and see whether it is working. Okay. Uh, avoid mocks, avoid local environments, um, measure performance, and then optimize. Never optimize without measuring. Ignore unit test coverage and focus on system test coverage. This is what we actually said right now, right? So the first iteration, if you start, learn about the domain. This is our job. And I continuously rename everything. I, I know I shift classes back and forth. This is actually, this is why it, it is pointless to create, you know, nice sophisticated code copy and paste is still your friend but uh what uh we do we try to remember what we copied and in my eyes you can copy you not know, twice but if you copy third time maybe there is time to think whether we should reuse or repackage this so you should not start you know with jar and you know abstract classes whatever copy is okay but not the entire time right so this uh in one point of time you should refactor and by the way it's not on the slide um, I created a slide uh, before before the show as a brain dump. So okay, not to forget things. And what 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 I try to uh, forgot to tell you, you should continuously refactor from the beginning. Uh, very important. What happens in most projects? They go fast at the beginning. They never refactor, and then you know this. Then they don't uh, don't understand the code anymore. Then they have to refactor, and management doesn't understand why they move slower after a few iterations. So I would say the trick is to be consistently slower. So at the beginning, you refactor a little bit more, so you're slower. And then later, you have you know, more time to refactor because uh, the, 
the management already knows your velocity. So I would say, don't be too fast at the beginning. This is actually the, the idea here. So improve, rethink, and refactor. And you will be amazed how much you, you can shift, you know, repackage um, at the beginning, okay? And in subsequent uh, iterations, I would say improve naming, remove redundancies, reuse tests. So we, we cannot cover this today, but um, what happens is in all projects, actually, this is also interesting, actually an, an, an interesting talk, a title for the talk. If you take a look at the interface, right? What happens then, we copy the interface to source main Java. So it will still work, it will be here. And, uh, oh, this was not the interface. The interface has to be here. So, and uh, it's just wrong package. So now it's nicer. So now we have the interface here and the test here. Why? Because if we build the projects, it will create a jar with the interface. So now we have a microservice client out of the box. But now if you th think about this, um, if we would, would build you know, a real system, we would have to log in first. And uh, so what happens is you have to log in, do something, log out, right? Log in, log out. And what you could do now, you can create additional classes here, which reuse common flow. You can say, I don't like to log out, uh, log in each time. So you can create a class like a business delegate, inject the class to your tests and you, you move faster. So what happens is we spend a little bit of time of reuse system tests to move faster. Otherwise you will find a lot of repetition, no? Log in, log out all the time, right? Uh, or for instance, very common in CRUD, right? In order to test delete, you have to create it first. So you have then create tests and then you copy the code with create so you can reuse it by, by copying the code from source test Java to source main Java. Okay, uh, reuse tests, keep tests green, remove code. So delete as much as code as you can and simplify whatever you can. So the internal structure, what I what I really like is the boundary control entity. This is an old pattern from Ivor Jacobson. Uh, this is uh, almost older than Java. And you saw already this icons is boundary control entity. Why I like it? Because it's old, it's available everywhere, the icons. And this is how I structure all my systems. And because it's that old, I have to not to discuss you know, why I'm using this because it's described in you know lots of books. And this is the next trick. Find a standard, then you don't have to justify why you're using this usually because you can always point to a book or whatever or a paper and you don't have you know, to spend time in meetings to, to, uh, to discuss naming conventions or whatever. So if you can standard, use it. And the idea is that we build Java packages, they are the components. So I started with it. This was the sessions. And you know, I already created boundary and entity. What was missing was control. If you own as boundary, if you want to have boundary and entity, means this is that simple system, only CRUD. There is nothing, you know, uh, strange to expect. Just like, you no, know, the boundary just um, uses the entity and control would be a little bit more logic, like, you know, um, tax calculation or something more sophisticated. So uh, we had no time, you know, for for code reviews. I actually wanted to show, walk through my old code, but it's going even, uh, I don't know how much time we have, but me, we are probably over time already. So um, this is my, uh, my uh, last slide, if you like, join the courses. So, uh, Bruno was joined already, always fun with him. And there are people from all over the world. Um, so it's, um, yeah, interesting, nice group of people. And uh, thank you to Max for inviting me. And this, you know, guerrilla presentation because, um, yeah, um, it was unplanned. It was like a, you know, uh, a chat with uh, Max in, in Discord. And if you like, you know, join Discord so we can continue our conversations. Um, Su Java Discord, and if you like my Discord as well, doesn't matter. You can always ping. I think Discord is great because you can always reach, you know, the guess regardless in which server they are, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, uh, 
any question? So, Max, I'm really surprised that I didn't got to know more heat because it was really controversial what I said. And I'm constant trouble in project with my approach. But uh, right now in a smaller companies, we are pretty successful and really enjoy because we've write really that simple code. And this is more challenging than you may think, because I would say more easy is, you know, to copy over all patterns, you know, and then uh, and then you already have no, uh, uh, you can justify, maybe. This is the biggest, this is a true story. I was, um, uh, I worked for a bank in Germany. They, they hired me, you know, to, to build, uh, to, to create a new architecture for them. And I got some developers. And uh, after two weeks, the manager came to me and said, look, everything works. But since you are there, we didn't wrote any code. It's more, a little. So your, your predecessors, the consultants, they create, you know, code generators, lots of code uh, action. And since you are there, you're just renaming the stuff and everything works. But I mean, we cannot justify you because it's almost no code. So it is really no kidding if you are working for larger institution and with our approach, this is uh, what uh, also someone wanted you know, um, uh, to, to say that uh, uh, it is lack of quality because they say, okay, how it's possible you know, to write a little code and, and it still works. And on that note, my very first project in Java was a CMS system and it was supposed to be distributed on CD. This was a cool story, actually. And, uh, you know, on CD, CD-ROM back then, there were the databases, oracles, everything was on CDs. And the CD was full. And our CD was five, was five megs because it was like, you know, five megs Java. Java was tiny at the beginning. And then maybe, you know, 50K our bytecode. And the management said, look, this doesn't look seriously. We cannot just ship, you know, the entire CD, I think was 600 megs. We cannot ship, you know, five megs on your CD. So um, I said, okay, what I can do? It's like, and, and they said, okay, they give us PDFs or whatever. And they created some nice PDFs, high resolution PDFs. So the CD became full. So no kidding. So sometimes, you know, you have to, to have a guerrilla mar marketing tactics, tactics to be successful. So we can cover as many questions as you like, but um, I'm done actually with KISS. And the next time we can focus on something different, if you like. Sure, sure. We got we got a little question from Eric about uh, about TDD. That what do you think of TDD for this present day? Using this kind of context, yeah. test driven develop. Uh, no, do domain driven design. Sorry, uh, to a present day. So domain driven design uh, is um, okay. How, how it's called? You know when you see it, right? For spe specific use cases, domain driven design is the way to go. And this is the killer use case. And what I noticed is everything graph related. For instance, in one project, uh, it was transportation system. And if you imagine, uh, it was for, uh, imagine like cities and cities are connected by, uh, by um, roads, right? And they are vehicles and they are, transport units or containers i think we call that if you if you think about this um you cannot pick you know a bicycle and go to highway and you also cannot have you know a huge truck going on on country road maybe so if you think about this what we did the road was an abstract class and the subclasses had different uh different capabilities you know like the max speed capacity and so forth and the same was the vehicle and the same was the transport. And what we, if you think about this, now it comes the, the most important thing. So we had the state of the road. This was like, you know, what, what, what were, you know, what was the max speed? This was the state, for instance. And we had the capabilities of the road. And now it, the cool story is we went to database and said, okay, give me all roads you know of between sao paulo and hamburg right <laughs> no impossible but say it would be possible now it, it was actually possible because the uh sea uh was also there so it, it could be ships so and um uh, and then you got and this abstract class back but if you call the method let's go there it picked the subclass right 
So if you wouldn't use object-oriented design and DDD, um, what will what would happen is you would get data transfer object, and you will have to answer ask the data transfer object all the time which type are you. If you are type you know of the highway, then go 200. If you type of country road, then go to 100 kilometers per hour. You know what I mean? And the entire code is no more understandable. And the other system, very similar, but completely different domain, was how signals traveled across IoT devices. And uh, this was also domain-driven design, more or less. I mean, domain-driven design is, for me, DDD is object-oriented on the next level a little bit. So I'm assuming you are working with objects and uh, and uh, we, we, and a little bit more DSL involved, right? Domain, this is for me. Because of, I, would, I, I don't know whether it is possible or appropriate to talk about functional pro programming and domain-driven design. Maybe not. Usually objects are involved. In this project was the same. So the buses between IoT devices, the signal carriers had different different capabilities, uh, different bandwidth, and uh, with objects it was very easy. In procedural way, it was hell on earth because we say, okay, hey signal carrier, what type are you? Okay, if you are you know the fiber channel, then we we had to pick up the constants and and see, okay, this is the calculation. But if you encapsulate the calculation in a Java class, it was beautiful and it was almost no code. But for CRUD applications, create, create, read, update, delete, DDD is pointless. I was in a project which was not only DDD, they tried to do the hexagonal architecture with DDD and port and, no, pipes and adapters, not port and adapters, pipes and filters, pipe and filters. And what they did, the Jax, they tried to decouple from JAXORES. So they had their own events, which were you no know, independent from HTTP events, and there was a huge effort, and no one understood what they are doing. There, there was, there, it was pointless. And I asked them why, and the answer was because they are independent from JAXORES. I said, but this is crazy. Look, why I should be independent from a standard? I mean, when it changed, right? It didn't change for the last 15 years. Okay, cool. Um, DDD. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah, what I just say, you know, just write stupid code and you and you congrat me. But if you are happy, perfect. So uh if you're proud of what you ship, you ship late. This is kind of true. And uh you should you should be proud that you are shipping, I would say. <laughs> So if you manage to ship, be proud. This would be, uh, I would say, this is this is this is my saying now, right? <laughs> uh, approval testing. I think approval testing is as uh, is uh, stress testing by business department. So this was in my case, like uh, the business department had stress tests, but I didn't never believed in this because they were they had like a think time. They perform, you know, the stress test. Okay, the user does something, then thinks about three seconds, and then something else happens. And with the think times, we had the problem. There was almost no parallel behavior in the system. And uh, the problem was we couldn't, you know, find any bugs. So the approval was important for to get the green light from business. And our stress tests were like, you know, approval tests without think time. Cool. Cool. So uh, I'd like to thank you everyone. Actually, the most of the message are, are congratulations to, to Adam for this amazing content. As Vinicius said, amazing content. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and solid experience. So it's very interesting to see. Uh, uh, when, when we talk about this topic, Adam, uh, I used to, to listen to people in the, in the community as they're talking about Clean code and uh, oh, the complex. We need to use a design pattern and so and so on. That's the reason why I'm I'm bringing this top to you. But, but uh, it's very interesting today to see that today, no one um, tries to 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 discuss with you about those things. But it's very interesting, interesting one. So I think 
Um, I must thank you for this pre presentation that we could uh, book another session to talk about another another yeah exactly for me it is uh, no a uh, late night always works so uh if, if it is boring out there in su java the next time we can do aws cloud or testing max just ping me on discord and we can arrange no problem at all so uh zooms works great the next time i will find easier the chat window this was the main problem right so if i then 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 it will work and yeah, um, yeah and now the, the clean code and everything i would say uh, at the end of the day, the client has to be satisfied whatever we are doing. And if the team likes the code, don't care about clean code, don't don't care about you know dogmatic stuff. You you just have you know. So maybe the last thing, uh, I would say, um, if you are, if you like to build software, you will do something which is sensible. But in some projects, large projects, the developers forgot what they are doing, right? So they need some guidance from outside and then you need clean code and agile or whatever. But, um, you know, if you just think about waterfall, right? Waterfall programming, it was a big 20 years ago. But if you think about this, nothing is waterfallish in the world. So we had a conversation with uh, the uh, surf pro, what was his name? The surfer from AWS, Vinicius, Assisius, Vinicius, right? So he's a surfer, right? So a waterfall would mean Vinicius would read, you know, 20 books about surfing, uh, then practice, you know, in gym like crazy, then go to the wave and win world championships. This would be waterfall process being, uh, 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 so it never works. What works is he tries to you know something and fails and then tries again, tries again, gets better and better. So this is iterative programming, right? So, but... It's not like you you have to go to the server and 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 explain the server that we he has to be agile. It just happens if someone would like to surf, right? But if you would force someone to surf, then you have you know to explain agile and waterfall or whatever because he has no interest in surfing, right? So th this is um, I would say. Um, if if um, you you say uh, you you have kids, Max, right? If if you mix was uh, kids will start programming, they will be agile, if they like. They will play, you know, with Scratch or with Logo, and they will try and they will have fun. But if you tell to the kids you have to program right now, it becomes a waterfall because they get assignment, they will have to do something. It will never work, right? So I don't like to to talk about the processes, agile and clean code because. Mostly just discuss, discussion of the sake of discussion, right? So it's like, um, let's talk about theory and because uh, we can talk on conferences about theory, so. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. So uh, also let, let me say uh, that, that Sheila also sent in the chat, it was a great session, thanks a lot. So that's it guys. So uh, I don't know, I must thank you everyone for this, this, this opportunity. And uh, I, I know that it's so late to 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 add and sorry sorry about that, Adam. <laughs> but we are joining a lot. <laughs> We're joining a lot. This is not this is a midnight hacks session. <laughs> Next time midnight we hacks. announce oh, midnight yeah. hacks with me. Always midnight hacks. Yeah, it's a good name for um, the new the new initiative, add an initiative in your in your website. Yeah, we do <laughs> midnight. midnight hacks this year again, and yeah, we can do once a year a midnight hack. No problem. <laughs> Beer, beer and bad for Adam. <laughs> um, <Vinicius>. Yeah. <laughs> beer and bad. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you, or, or you know, just you know, cut my cut my wire that I will stop talking. Okay. See you next time. Okay, so I will stop the record and uh, guys, see you soon in the next meeting. Okay, then let's meet up. So let's stop it.